Well, good morning, National Primitive Baptist Convention. We are excited for our morning lecture. We are excited to have all of you who are present uh, inside of the sanctuary. And we're also excited to have you who are joining us online. Those that are online, we want you to do us a favor. We need you to like, share, and comment. Uh, we want you to engage in this lecture. Uh, we want you to share, spread the word that the National Primitive Baptist Convention is live, and we're getting ready to hear from a great man of God, a great lecturer on today. Today's lecturer is none other than Elder James William Shelton. He is the proud pastor of the Progressive Primitive Baptist Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. His topic today is financial management. He'll be dealing with praise God till debt do us part. We're excited. We're ready. Again, if you're virtually watching us online, we need you to share this lecture. Somebody needs to hear this. So we, at this time, we will present to others, some intro, introduce to others, Elder Shelton. May he come. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Mason for that uh, warm introduction. We give honor to God the Father, to God the Son, and to God our Holy Spirit. It's just good to be here once again. To our illustrious and magnificent President, Dr. Kenneth A. Duke, to our distinguished Vice President, uh, Dr. Oscar Montgomery, and to all of the moderators, the Fisher Board members, and other ecclesiastical leaders of this great convention. God is still good, and God is still on the throne. Can I get a witness? I want to express uh, my sincere thanks to Dr. Kenneth Duke for the opportunity to labor before you on this morning. So on today, my assignment was not to preach, but the assignment given to me was to have a discussion or to have a talk, if you please, on the subject of finances. To talk with all of us concerning how we deal with and how we handle our personal finances in our lives. In other words, discuss and talk about how a lot of people in America deal with and how they handle their finances. So then my assignment is just to discuss some basic information with you about what most of us already know and to lecture and share with you what my wife and I have done and show you how God has worked in our lives. Will somebody just shout praise the Lord? God has been so good, and he's been so kind. In seminary, uh, they taught us how to build sermons, but they never taught us about personal finance or reimagining our economics. We must always remember that when in debt, Extra money is never extra money because getting out of debt is about saving more and spending less. And one of the reasons many people continue to stay in debt is because many people do not have a plan to get out of debt. And I just believe that any man or woman who does not have a plan is a person who plans to fail. Because getting out of debt is really simply about discipline. What I mean is hypothetically, if the doctor told you that if you stop smoking in three months, you would live for 25 more years. But if you don't, in three months, you would die this year. Do you think you would have the discipline to do that? I thought so. And that's the same way it is with being and getting out of debt. Discipline is the key. 
So you see, debt-free living is about me and you taking control of our finances and not allowing our finances to take control of you and I. So you see, many people all across the country have gotten themselves into some tough situations due to Christmas shopping, the coronavirus, and other different bills that we have in our lives. So on today, I want to challenge you, and I want to challenge myself about how to handle our finances better in 2022 than we have in the past and recent years, thereby for a short while. The Lord and I would like to shorten this four-part presentation and lecture from this title, Praise God Till Death Do Us Part. Therefore, with the Lord's help, my objective is to accomplish three things. Number one, discuss what research suggests. Number two, discuss why and how I know that a lot of people are in debt today. And then number three, discuss what to do about it and what God allowed me and my wife to do. Because you see, my wife and I, we first became debt-free in 2012. So can we just have a topical discussion? And I just want to use just two basic scriptures to cover this topical message. Proverbs 22 and 7 in the English Standard Version uh, the Bible says, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is slave of the lender. The Message Bible, Eugene Peterson says, the poor are always ruled over by the rich. So don't borrow and put yourself under their power. You see, in the context of this message, in the context of this passage of Scripture, it contrasts the social advantages of wealth with the disadvantages of poverty. Because, you see, wealth gives a man security. Wealth gives a man power. Wealth makes a man have friends. And then wealth allows you and I to say whatever we want to say, however we want to say it. In other words, at best, in key areas of social life, the rich have the choice of acting wisely or foolishly. That's the point. Because the rich have elbow room and they have more freedom and he or she has more freedom to do what he, she wants to do. I got some mail in just the other day and it was about credit cards. And I opened it up. There was one from Bank of America. There was one from uh, Regions Bank asking me to take and get a credit card. Listen. According to consumer debt statistics, the total, debt, the total debt in the U.S. is at a record high of $14.76 trillion. The average American per U.S. adult is about $58,604, and 70% of all American households have at least some kind of debt, a mortgage, a card note, student loans and credit cards. Is anybody in here feeling that same way? You ought to say amen. And on the average, Americans carry $6,194 in credit card debt, according to the 2019 Experian Consumer Credit Review. And Alaskans owe the most on their credit card with over $8,000. Now, eight out of 10 adults in America have at least one credit card and 45% carry a balance and the average credit card debt for the U.S. household is about $14,241. You see, the medium or the average credit card interest rate for all credit cards in Investopedia database currently stands at 19.49% interest. And the people... Uh, most of the people, what they do when they get credit card, most pay the minimum payment, while 48% pay their in full amount every single month. But listen, the Federal Reserve, and I'm getting to my point, the Federal Reserve uh, says that the average student loan debt is about 
$792. The average auto loan is about $31,142. The average home loan or median monthly payment is about $1,595. Because you see, we live in a what's my monthly payment society. All the while, 61% of U.S. population now lives from paycheck to paycheck. Meaning that when we get paid on Friday, we already broke even before we can get paid the next available check. Do you know anybody like that? Why don't you talk back to me? Does anybody know anyone like that, that in your household or in your neighborhood that's like that? So what do we do about it? I'm glad that you asked because I want to give you some practical stuff about what God has helped me and my wife to do and how we have reimagined our economics. So to get out of debt, I learned three rules for finance that helped me. Number one, pay God with your tithe. Somebody ought to be shouting because the Bible says in Malachi chapter three, will a man rob God? Yes, he will. Well, how will he rob him? Not with a mask, but the man comes every single Sunday. And what I found out is that Bonnie and Clyde were not the greatest bank robbers that ever hit the country. But what I found out is that many bank robbers show up every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock and rob God with no mask on right to his face. So you got to pay God first. That's what I did in order to get out of debt. And I already hear you thinking, but it will make sense after a while because you see, God don't make sense sometimes because I, what I found out about God is that his mathematics and your and my arithmetic is just two different separate things because I don't understand in my mathematics uh, when I say one plus one plus one equals three. But in God's arithmetic, one times one times one equals one because you see, God is a good God. And because I am a grace giver, I don't give just a tithe, but I'm a grace giver. I give more than a tithe because I feel like God has blessed me more than 10%. And somebody once told me, well, pastor, how should we tithe? How should we tithe? Shall I tithe on the net or shall I tithe on the growth? Well, I say tithe on based upon what God has blessed you on. When he woke you up this morning, was it on the net or was it on the growth? So when God has blessed us, we have to learn how to give him the glory, give him the honor and all of the praise because sometimes I don't understand God because God is not understandable sometimes because I don't understand how I can give him more than 10% but yet I can still have enough money to pay my house note, my car note and all of my bills. I still don't understand God because God just don't make sense sometimes. Anybody know he don't make sense sometimes? I don't know how God makes sense sometimes because I don't understand how God can take a brown cow and let him grow red hair, eat green grass to give off white milk so grandmama could churn yellow butter. So I learned to live beneath my means and not above my means by not robbing God. But not only pay God with your tithe, but this is where I want to drop my hat. Number two, pay yourself with your finances. Somebody ought to be shouting right now. Now, this is where I want to lay my head because you see, debt and having debt is not about how much you and I make. But having debt and being in debt is about how we handle and what we do with the money and the resources that God blessed us to have. You see, if you think that debt is about how much money we make, then, and you don't believe me, ask Curtis Jackson, 50 cents, the rapper who in 2015 filed bankruptcy because he was $32 million in debt. If you don't believe me, ask Mike Tyson, who made over $400 million boxing but filed insolvency in 2003. Then look at Wesley Snipes and Chris Tucker and Songbird 
Tony Braxton, who filed twice after selling 20 million albums and then filed in, two, in 1998 with a $2.8 million debt. And then let's look at Evander Holyfield. I ain't hating on nobody, but I'm just talking about debt. And I'm talking about what I'm talking about, which is that debt is not about how much money you make, but it's about what we do with the money that God blesses us to have. Evangel Holyfield, the boxer, he earned $400 million boxing. But after three divorces, 11 children by six different mothers, he filed bankruptcy in 2012. And then I can go on and on and on because he had a 109-room mansion that Rick Ross is living in right now because he filed bankruptcy. And so I can go on and on and on with people like Gary Coleman and Marvin Gaye and Sinbad and all other kind of people like Nicholas Cage all filed for bankruptcy at one point or another. So debt is not about how much we make, but debt is about what we do with what we do make. Now, what to do about it? Tevin Campbell says, can we talk? Can I just tell you what I did? Can I just tell you my secret what I did? We buy chewing gum for one to two dollars. An average pack of cigarettes costs about seven dollars. We buy a six pack of 16 ounce Pepsi and, and, and Coca-Colas that costs about 350. Most of us, we buy snacks and eat on snacks all the time. We got to have some chips in our mouth and when we get finished with snacks, that's about five dollars. Well, that's 16 dollars and 50 cent in just one week. Okay, this is what I did. See, take that same $16.50, and I sacrificed some stuff, and I multiplied it times 52 weeks, and it comes out to $858. You take that money and open up your savings account. And what I did, my, my plan started when, uh, when uh, my first son was born. Uh, when my first son was born, uh, I challenged my wife, and I said, honey, I said, look, I'm going to take $1 a day and invest it in our son. Put $1 a day up for my son. Most of us, we throw away dollars on tips, but I took $1 a day for 365 days. So that was $365 saved. I asked her to match it and to challenge me, and she took her 365, and that came out to $730, okay? And $730 over an 18-year period when my son graduated from high school, we had already saved $13,140 for his savings account for him to go to college. Amen? But listen. Just think about practical stuff, what we could do. Just think about if you save more than that. Can you imagine how your income and imagine how your savings would grow? This is what I did. Other words, what God blessed me to do. Now, I'm a retired Metro Davidson County school teacher. Retired 30 years in 2014. And I'm almost too embarrassed to tell you how much money I made. But I'm going to do it for the sake of this presentation. I retired in 2014 making $58,500. That's why nobody with sense goes into teaching today. Because $58,000 ain't no money to go in teaching today. I knew that it was hard for me to save money when I cash my check and then I look at it. So what I did to save money, what I did, I went and when I got hired in 1983 as a substitute teacher, I went to the credit union because I was making 
$311.89 every two weeks as a substitute teacher. And so what I did, I went to the credit union, Tennessee Teachers Credit Union, and told them to take out for me payroll deduction, $25. Then I went to Cornerstone, to Educators Credit Union, and said, I want you all to take out by payroll deduction, $25. So now I had $50 coming out of my check that I made $311 with, and so that $50 was going directly into my savings account. But then, don't forget, school teachers get paid twice a month. So in other words, I had $100 going out every month. And at the end of the year, I had $900 to $1,000 already saved in my savings account, all because of the fact that I couldn't see it. And when you can't see it, then you don't never miss it. Am I telling the truth? So, 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 so when I got paid, that's what I did. I knew that I needed this $311. So I had both of them to do payroll deduction. And then what I did was, after I had them take out their $25 each, then, uh, Doc, I got a little greedy. And the next time I went down there and I told them, now take out $65. And then I went every year, now take out $75. $75. And every time I added more and more to it, and all of a sudden, my income grew. So after doing 30 years of this, you already know the math. I had way more than what I started out with. So in my mind, I did this for 30 years, and it went directly into my savings account. And each year, the more I made, the more I took out. And so when you're looking at the rule, the rule is that you always pay God first 10 or more percent. Somebody ought to shout, pay God. Then pay yourself. Secondly, 5 or 10%. Even if you don't pay yourself but $5, put something in the bank. And then third, then you pay your bills. So you see, that's what I mean when I say pay yourself with your finances. Because you see, when you and I pay everybody else, it's dumb not to pay ourselves. Would somebody talk to me? See, I'm not calling anyone dumb, but I'm saying it's dumb not to pay yourself. Because, you see, we pay our house note. Anybody here pay a car note other than me? Anybody pay our bills? We pay and give our children lunch money. We pay the IRS. We pay federal taxes and FICA taxes. And then turn around and we pay all of the brown people. Did you hear what I said? We pay all of the brown people because we pay the Vietnamese to do our nails. We pay the Koreans to get our hair. That's why we got green hair, purple hair, red hair, blue hair, bronze hair, and every other kind of hair. We pay the Iranians uh, to get tobacco and to get gas. We pay the Mexicans because we eat uh, at all of the Mexican restaurants. And then we pay the little people from India because they own all of the hotels and all of the motels in the city. So when we pay all of them, why does it make sense not for us to pay ourselves? Pay yourself something. Dallas Mavericks owner of the professional NBA team says, and I quote, whenever you put your money in a savings or CD, you sleep better because you got more money the next day than today. That's what the billionaire Mark Cuban said. But the problem with many of us today and the problem I don't mean no harm, but the problem with many black African-American people today is that many of us, we just spending too much. 
Many of us, we are buying too much. Many of us are simply charging and swiping too much, hollering, just swipe my card. But you see, we got to learn how to put that card back up in your wallet. Put that card back up in your purse. Uh, you see, my brothers and my sisters, I told my wife uh, to put that card back up in your purse uh, because women uh, and my wife, uh, all she thought about was sales, sales, sales. Uh, and all she would tell me, honey, uh, Macy's is having a blowout sale. Honey, uh, Macy's is having a midnight madness sale. And everything is 50% off. But I came to tell somebody in here today, 50% off ain't no good sale when you and I know it's 100% out of our budget. Because grandmama always said that, baby, if you can't pay for it with cash, then you don't need to have it. You need to let it just keep sitting on that mannequin just like it was. Because some of us, some people, we got more hats uh, than Dillard's and Macy's. Uh, we got more bags than Louis Vuitton and Gucci. We got more dresses uh, than Liz Claiborne and Michael Kors. Uh, we got more five-piece, uh, nine-button suits uh, than s &K. But we ain't got no money to pay God, and we ain't got no money to pay ourselves. That's why we are in debt. Because you see, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, and it says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Now, how in the world can you and I leave an inheritance to our grandchildren when we ain't got nothing for ourselves? Because you see, according to Go Banking Rates 2019 concerning savings accounts, listen what they say. They say that 70% of all Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account. 45% have nothing saved. And a 2021 survey said that 25% of all Americans have no emergency savings at all, while 20% say that they have some emergency savings, but they don't have enough to cover for three months. Then 51% of all Americans have less than three months worth of early and emergency savings, while most experts suggest that all of us should have at least six months of emergency savings because a rainy day is going to come. Anybody know that a rainy day will come? A rainy day will come in your house. Matter of fact, it's raining outside right now, but a rainy day will come. So we have to learn how to pay God first with your tithe. And then pay yourself secondly, at least something, and then pay your bills. Therefore, to get out and to stay out of debt, we must learn to arrange all of the first two principles around that third principle, which is paying our bills. Therefore, to get out, we have to learn to do that. Well, Elder Shelton, I hear you. I hear you. You're saying I can't do it. You just don't understand my situation. Well, we can do it. And yes, I do understand because I know what it is. It's credit cards. And somebody ought to shout credit cards. So can I just say a little bit about credit cards? I'm just talking about what I did. Credit cards, cash loans, come get me in a hurry cash, ready cash, speedy loans, and advanced financial 24-hour cash. Christians and God's people don't have no business hanging out at those kind of places. I know I'm right about it. Why in the world will we go down to advanced financial and let them hold a check for $200 and then come back two weeks later to pick it up and we owe them $230? That's dumb debt. Dumb debt. I don't buy Lucky Eights. I don't buy tickets. That's all right. Because I trust God to give me what I stand in need of. But since we're talking about credit cards, let me run through this real quickly with the time that I got left. 
you only need one credit card. If you got five, six, seven, eight credit cards, consolidate all of them into one card. I only use my credit card for a couple of things. Number one, if I'm going to rent a hotel room. Dr. Bass, number two, if I'm going to rent a car. And then when I get finished renting it, what I do is I pay for it in cash. Does anybody hear me? See, I know that many don't carry cash today, but, but still, I pay for it with cash. Another thing about credit cards, get cards that make sense and cards that do something for you. Did you all hear what I'm saying? Get credit cards that make sense and do something for you. In other words, get a credit card that has cash back on it. Or maybe it gives you 100,000 bonus points where you can stay at a hotel free or something like that. Get you a Southwest card and use that so every time you charge, you building up points so that you can fly free to the next convention. Get a card that does something other than keep us in debt by paying high interest rates. Now, the interest or the APR rates on the average credit card is about 19%. And some go as high as 27%. Now, let me tell you a little secret what you do with them. You get on the phone and call them up on, on, on the credit card people, on the back of your card, and tell them, my interest rate is at 27%. I need you to lower and drop my interest rate or else... I'm going to get me another card. They would do it. You know why? They want to keep your business. And so once they drop that interest rate, you take that little bitty money and save it and put it in the bank. Would somebody talk back to me? We're talking about saving. That's what this presentation is about. So no need to have pretty cards. Some people like American Express gold cards. American Express black cards, and they're paying all this money for it, but they don't do anything for you and I, but get you a 0% free card. Now, this is what I do as it relates to my credit cards. I never, and I mean never, I never charge nothing on my credit card that I already don't have the money in the bank to pay for it. See, that's how we stay out of debt. See, I don't, I don't charge nothing unless that money is sitting in the bank because once that credit card comes, bam, I'm sending it right back to them. See, cash is king, or at least cash used to be king. But also, you can make and save money if you refinance your home. Anybody ever refinance a home? The rate dropped 2 or 3%, and you refinance your money, your home, and then the money that you get from that uh, refinancing, don't think that that money to spend, that's the money you take and put in a savings account because we're talking about saving. Now, why do we get in debt? We, we get in debt because we live in in a what's my monthly payment society. We get in debt because some of us, the truth of the matter, we're wearing our debt. Some of us, we get in debt because we are driving our debt. Some of us get into debt because we are smelling good in our debt. Some of us are looking good and we're fronting it. And really, we dressed up good smelling dust that look real good. But the truth of the matter is, many people in this world are broke, busted, and disgusted, ain't got a dime, and can't pay attention all because we are in debt. So what to do with debt on many cards? This is what I did. I had seven or eight cards, and I took the card that had the smallest amount on it, and I began paying it off by putting big lump sums on it while I took the other five or six cards and paid the minimum payment. And then once that card got knocked off, I cut it up. Then I took the next 
smallest card with the next highest debt on it. And then after I paid it off, put all much money as I could put on it and paid all the other cards minimum payment. And then when I got that card, I cut it up all the way until I got down to one card. Because you see, I had to learn many times and, and that's what some of us, we have to learn. Many times I had to learn that we don't always need to eat out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Every now and then, uh, some of us, we need to learn how to eat in and eat at home. And I think I may have just said something because a lot of people are in debt because we eat out seven and eight days a week and then we ain't got no money. And so if you think about how much money that you can save a day, how much money that you and I can save a week, how much money that you and I can save a month just by eating out and not eating out when you have some money. Now I tell my wife, baby, we eating out once a month. So we go to Ruth Chris, I maybe spend $168 for both our meals. And so we didn't eat out for the month. We ain't eating out no more. I don't care what you say. I'm going to the store and buy $168 worth of grocery that can last us two weeks. See what I'm saying? We can't eat out every day and then expect, and you want to know why you in debt. You see, you save eating out money, and then you invest it and open up a savings account. Now, I'm getting ready to get in trouble as I get ready to close. I'm getting ready to get in trouble because now I'm going against the Bible. So I challenged my wife, baby, how, how can and how much would you save if you did your own nails for one month? <laughs> baby, how much could you save if you did your own hair for one month? I'm talking about reimagining our economics. I challenged my wife for two months uh, without getting a pedicure. Ain't nobody, baby, going to see your feet. Ain't nobody going to see your feet but me. You put on some socks. Uh, when you go out, put on some boots. Uh, when you go out, uh, put on some clothes and shoes uh, and learn how to save that money. Because I challenged my wife. Uh, we can do it. Uh, and that's what I came to let somebody know today that sometimes uh, you can do it if you really want to do it. But it's all about sacrifice. Uh, so, man, uh, we can do it. Uh, anybody here believe we can do it? Uh, it's only whether we want to do it or not. Uh, because I ain't going to die and die in debt. Uh, is that your testimony too? Uh, somebody ought to be saying something. Because I ain't going to die. Uh, and the church got to lift an offering just to bury me uh, and to pay for my casket. What about you? That don't make no sense. Uh, we live in every kind of way. Uh, we driving all kind of cars, uh, looking down on people. But then we broke. That don't make no sense. <laughs> Trying to impress people who really don't like you anyway. So I came to bless someone. And to let you know that I don't care how old you are. It don't matter who you are and what you may look like. But I came to tell you that it's never too late. You're never too old or never too late to come out of debt. Does anybody in here believe that? You're never too old. Don't just let the devil trick you and tell you that you're too old to come out of debt. Huh? Because you can come out of debt. Huh? Because I said you're never too old and you're never too late huh? to get started. And then when you get started, huh? then that's when you can praise God huh? till debt do us part. Because you see the dog, huh? he praises God with his bark. Huh? The cat huh? praises God with his meow. Huh? The snake praises God uh, with his hiss. Uh, 
The hyena praises God with his howl. The lion praises God with his roar. The snail praises God with his crawl. The duck praises him with his quack. The cow praises him with his moo. And man praises God with his mind and all of his heart. So getting out of debt, God's way begins with acknowledging that God has no debts because he paid it all of our debts. He paid all of our debts in full at the cross when Jesus was crucified and our debts got up when Jesus rose from the grave one early Sunday morning. I ain't going. That's why we can praise God till debt do us part. God bless you. I know my time is up. I have some handouts. I have some handouts if you're interested that you can pick them up. I'll put them here. It's four different handouts, and uh, they don't belong to me, okay? Only one of them I had partially made up for you and for me. But it's four different handouts, and you can pick them up anytime you get ready. God bless you.